Like, it is properly quick, properly athletic. I'm here with the new Hyundai Kona, which is kind of an all-new car, uh, or I like to call it the little bulldog. And that came from the designer. Uh, one of the designers in an interview once said, uh, you know, I kind of modeled this car after a bulldog, small, aggressive, uh, you know, kind of in your face. Uh, I like the design. I think in front there's elements of Range Rover definitely uh, present in there. A couple of things I want to point out in the front. I love this. Um, this is kind of what reminds me of Range Rover. It's not actually functional, but it's a cool design piece that on a Range Rover, I believe, would be the air intake. Uh, so you get like a higher uh, ground, you know, gr not ground clearance, but a higher, um, you know, water uh, treading area. These are not actually the headlights, as you might think. Oh, it has LED headlights. The headlights are actually down here. Uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting, uh, you know, touch on here. You can't get laser guided cruise control in here. Obviously, they plan for it though, because this is where the sensor uh, would be. I'm sure they'll maybe add it later, and obviously that's in the plan. It just you know didn't make uh, this revision even in the higher trim. Coming around to the side here, love these rims. Like it's a very sporty, aggressive. Like I said. Range Rover Evoque is what it shouts to me. What does it remind you guys of? You really have to see this car in person, and in darker colors, it looks better. It hides a lot of the plastic. I like aggressive, kind of funky, different, sporty-looking, choppy cars. So for me, I like it, obviously. Like I said, that's something you'll probably either just love or really hate about the car. In the back, it's a little more conservative and uh, kind of traditional-looking. Uh, I always tell people I have a turbocharged, a kind of rare, exotic car for the week, the Kona. And sometimes people think Kona's egg. Um, so that's always funny when that happened. Uh, but yeah, it's a good, it's a good looking car. It, if nothing else, it looks different than everything else on the road. How is it? It's actually not bad for these CUVs or compact utility vehicles. All, oftentimes with the rear seats folded up, they'll have nothing back here. This one actually has quite a bit and uh, it's got this little storage. Uh, and then underneath that, it actually has a spare tire, which I thought was super cool. Um, that you know, you kind of get the spare tire and some storage. Uh, and then with these seats folded down, it, a ton of stuff back there. It's actually one of the bigger, like I would call them, you know, compact utility vehicles uh, out there. I kind of like the size a lot. Like I said, just kind of end back here. Um, and then you have to fold the seats down to get any significant space back there. Um, so very cool, very cool there. Let's check out that engine, that 1.6 turbo. Looks like there's a little mirror there so you can see yourself as you're doing car reviews. That's not actually the case though. That's for the head up display. Pull this guy up. Uh, again, I, I was surprised me when they don't, when they, a car is up front bias and weight distribution, they don't, you know, find an area in the back with the battery. They didn't. Uh, I like the way the air intake comes around here. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and actually, as you look at it, it almost does seem like the air intake wraps around there. So maybe part of this is functional. I'm not sure. Very strange. Uh, but nice little turbo inline. It's like an inline four. Uh, there are other compact utility vehicles. Two six feet people are going to be just fine. This one is actually kind of uh, bigger. Um, maybe this wouldn't be like a subcompact. Maybe this is actually considered a midsize. Either way, it actually has practicality, which is what I bemoan about a lot of these vehicles. I'm like, it's literally you're just buying it for the increased ride height and maybe all wheel drive. The interior of this car is, you know, probably pretty standard for its class. It actually looks a little better on video than it does in person. You know, it's it's nice. I mean, with the starting price of this car, uh, you know, you can't expect too much. But Hyundai always does nice interiors, like the steering wheel on this guy. Uh, as well. like the kind of round vents on there. I think that's a nice style change. The Hyundai gauges are always, you know, uh, pretty darn good. You get a nice trip computer in the middle there, uh, as well as some big, uh, you know, backlit gauges, which are very nice. Climate control, uh, pretty basic on here. Very functional though, very easy to use. Um, no dual zone, even in the higher end trims. Again, not a lot in this class has it. Really, really do like the key on this one. I don't show keys too often. Uh, but Hyundai's doing a new key design, and it is really, really nice. Like, it feels so premium. Um, lots of storage on this guy, as you'd expect from an SUV. A little cubby up there. Uh, the higher trims have wireless charging down there. Apple uh, CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff. Heated seats. Even on the high-end trims, you can't get cooled seats in this guy. But again, uh, that's kind of par for this course. We'll talk about this all-wheel drive lock in the drive review. I like that it's there not only for a little, you know, light going through a field sort of thing, uh, but I also like that it's there. Um, because um, it doesn't seem to have a high-speed lockout here. Drive modes, uh, of course, there's a sport mode, which with the dual clutch helps things exponentially. Coming back here, you know, manual handbrake still, cup holders, 
and a nice little console. It's not not the deepest in the world, but uh, you know it's there. If they'd have gone with an E handbrake, you know obviously you would have been able to move this forward and have a little more room. Um, coming around here again, nothing too too crazy. Uh, nice screen in the middle. They're very high resolution on the you know you can get that on the upgraded trims. Even the basic Hyundai Kia screens are pretty pretty decent. Um, and then of course you know the seats are good looking with the leather trim and they're comfortable. Obviously the leather is, you know, optional on a higher end trim. And of course there is a moon roof you can get on this guy as well if you like to see the sky. I mean, it's it's pretty basic. You get cup holders. Oh, you do get a lot of leg room like I pointed out earlier. Sorry for my hands, I've been doing car work all morning. Uh, and uh, in addition, you get this little window back here. So as you're riding along, you can get a view of what's behind you. I think that's kind of cool. Um, it's just, I, I love little random windows that when cars have that. And then of course, good visibility out of the back here as well. And yeah, some of the best driver assistance systems out there. Um, this one includes speed, your lane information. Uh, if it knows what the speed is, uh, uh, you know, the speed limit, it'll do that as well. Uh, so lots and lots of information there. Um, you know, available to you. It also include your blind spot monitoring. I'll overlay if I can get everything it includes. Check this out, it looks so cool. So yeah. Away it goes into its little cubby. Goodbye. Car, it just whirs up to life. So cool. Um, and, and some people don't like these, but it requires a different windshield, um, sometimes to have other, you know, ones or a much higher power uh, display on there. Here is with the Android Auto, I can actually use my phone and actually show you guys, so that's cool. This is the latest version, so this one that I have uh, includes all the messaging apps and then eventually once Waze releases a version, since I'm on iOS 12, uh, it'll have that. These are your favorites, uh, you know, your home button, uh, pretty standard. Uh, uh, Apple CarPlay in there. You can get all your radio apps, Apple Music, Google Music, Sirius. Um, you know, I'm pretty brand, brand agnostic, even though I like Apple products. So I have a little bit of everything on here. And then of course, here are all your apps. Hyundai will just take you back to the uh, main screen. And then of course, yeah, I do wish you could change what was on the left side. That's, that's kind of an, uh, frustrating to me. Um, it does have all these data services though, which are really cool. Look at that. Uh, you, you know, that's kind of neat if you get the nav. Um, obviously, it's everything you can get on your phone. So, and then here's your Sirius XM. One thing I will say, here's the radio view. One thing I do love about uh, Hyundai Kia, and I don't know a whole lot of other cars that have it, I'm sure some do, uh, is you can rewind. So if you like a song, uh, you can go back to the beginning. And what's really cool is you can even go back a couple of other songs, uh, which three, four, wow, it's actually four songs. Uh, and that's cool because you don't even have to be on the station. I go here to this, I'm like, oh, that's a cool song. But I wonder what played before. Well. I can just go right back. It's so cool uh, and so uh, so neat. Obviously, you only get that on Sirius XM. Uh, this one does have HD radio uh, as well, which sounds really, really great. Uh, I do like the Armin Kardon uh, system on here. If you like, it's not a Harman Kardon. I do like the Infinity system on here. If you listen to music, uh, you know, it gives you a center speaker up there, a nice subwoofer in back. Uh, I believe a little bit upgraded tweeters and of course amp as well. So if you listen to music, that's a nice option. Uh, to get these vents not only look cool but they're very functional to close them you just direct it all the way to the right and then of course you do have adjustability within that dual power down here uh, as well as only the one usb which on an suv uh, i kind of wish there were, were two um, but again you can just get an adapter for one of these and you can of course option up the wireless uh, charging so if you have a newer iphone or a phone that's if you have a phone that supports that uh, it's kind of cool and then i like this it almost looks like a manual we'll talk about that more in the drive review all right guys so on to that drive review one thing i like to do is i like to lock the all-wheel drive system if i'm driving really spiritedly because otherwise it's just basically a front wheel drive vehicle until the system detects something and by, by then it just gives this weird uh thing somebody can let me know in the comments if that's like a bad thing to do but it doesn't have a lockout, unlike a lot of these where at like 30, 40, it like starts to knock you out of the lock. Um, so I just do that and sport mode. Let me take it out of the all wheel drive though and leave it in sport and kind of show you all wheel drive lock off. That's the, see, I don't know if you noticed that. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the four wheel drive lock on, just to show you what a big difference uh, in the balance and dynamics of car make. 
Uh, he's pretty incredible. Okay, same exact uh, maneuver, same exact throttle, but with all-wheel drive lock on. Boom. No, you know, no front wheel drive torque steer. Um, you get your back pushing you through a little bit, and you also get the front pulling you through. This is a surprisingly athletic SUV, let me tell you. That was probably the biggest surprise. Like, I knew it's a Hyundai, so I knew it'd be nice quality. I knew it would be nice inside. But it's actually a really nice drive. Let me start on, like, how it is as a cruiser. It gets It's very efficient. This engine is good. Um, good power, good fuel economy, uh, things like that. But here I am in sport mode. Like it, it, it kicks you back with that dual clutch and with that turbo, and it feels very fast. The steering in sport mode, as you can see here, um, I move it just a little bit and it actually moves uh, well. It's, it's got a nice ratio um, and it, it tightens up nicely in sport mode. Um, there's definitely a certain sportiness to this SUV. One thing I will say, but it has a dual clutch, which um, I thought was an interesting choice. It's kind of slow shifting. There's no paddles, so you probably won't shift it anyway. Just leave it in sport. It's pretty good it as a dual clutch at figuring out what you need and uh, you know getting where you where you want to be. Sport will keep you in a low gear and downshift very aggressive for you. There's a bicyclist here, so I'm gonna take it on my little test track now and kind of talk through the various aspects. All right, so initial off the line acceleration. This is about a little, very mild turbo lag, but it's really not bad. And then once those turbos hit, it's incredible. Um, and when I see turbo lag, don't think of cars from the 80s. It's just me as an auto journalist driving lots of turbo cars. It's it's a little there. Um, half of it, though, is honestly the dual shift down to downshift on the dual clutch. Um, like I said, the steering is incredibly good. Um, the engine is incredibly good. The brakes are surprisingly grippy. I would say, you know, as a true sports uh, vehicle, like compared to like a Mazda, or if you're comparing this to other sporty SUVs, it's probably the tires that kind of let it down a little bit, but you can obviously switch those uh, if you like spirited driving. Believe it or not, that's the part that gives up first. The suspension is actually pretty well tuned on this. Uh, you can tell um, having the M designer on staff at Hyundai Kia has really helped their cars be a lot more athletic uh, to the point of being, you know, equal to Honda uh, and in some ways comparable to Mazda. The Mazda is probably just that little bit more fun, uh, but it's not bad. There's a dog in the road. Okay, gotta go a little slow for that. He's on a leash now. God, this is fun. I never thought like a compact utility vehicle would be fun. I mean, there is the Mazda uh, I CX-3, which is really just a Mazda 3 wagon lifted on a lot of ways. Um, but this guy, like, you don't think of Hyundai as the athletic choice. That's starting to change a little bit, though. Um, I don't know if there's a Kia version of that, because the Kias tend to be just that little bit more aggressive, and then Hyundai tends to be more of like a luxury thing, at least here in the States. It's probably very different overseas, because uh, their cars are 90-some percent the same here in the States, the Hyundai and Kia cars, if there's a shared sibling. A lot of differences come down to, you know, tuning, interior, etc. Um, but, uh, you know, the engines are often shared as are the platform or chassis. Would I buy this car with my own money? You can get these, I believe they started like under 20, which is a steal, fully loaded out at 30. Uh, you do get a lot of stuff if you want like a luxury experience at 30. It's still not a bad deal. I would probably get one, you know, middle wise options package. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't get the, the high, high end trim, um, but you know, if you could get a, a Hyundai often also you have to think when you see these prices will do deals on the cars so what you're seeing is it like the, the Hyundai seems to have a summer deal a Christmas deal much like many car companies so would I buy this car with my own money uh, that's a tricky one because uh, I generally don't like compact utility vehicles I'll be honest with you I just don't see the point uh, unless you like the ride height over getting like a hatchback uh, version of a car if they make one this one, however, really surprised me uh, in that it's fun. It's uh, a good all around vehicle. It has some utilities I showed you earlier and under 20 grand, it's a bargain. And even at 30 uh, with like incentives you can get, you know, the dealers will sometimes often work with you. Um, and then Hyundai uh, he, uh, seems to be pretty good about at least once or twice a year. Uh, they seem to do a big sale where there's a couple of grand off or a great interest rate, things like that. So chances are, you know, even on the loaded one, you're not gonna be paying 30 for this. You're gonna be paying somewhere in the 20s. Um, I would probably, if I was personally buying it, get like a midline trim. There's a lot of cool 
attack them, but it's like, eh. Like if I could just get it with, um, you know, the better sound system um, and maybe like heated seats, uh, I could probably forego the head-up display and the nav, things like that. This is a really fun compact utility vehicle and it's kind of sporty as well. So I really have enjoyed it um, more than I thought I would. Um, so, you know, Hyundai and Kia have constantly been upping their game and this is another example uh, of that. Well, next time my speedy racers drive on.